Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to take a look at some handmade watercolors from Xanadu Art Studio, and I really don't want to call this a review more than an overview because I have not used um, many handmade watercolors. I reviewed the Renaissance ones last week, and I really love those, but they're definitely, they behave more like a traditional watercolor, probably because they're semi-handmade, uh, so I don't feel like they were a true um, review of handmade watercolors. Um, so if you're on Instagram and you're seeing all these um, wonderful little shops selling handmade watercolors, that is kind of what I think about when I think of handmade watercolors. And that's what we have here today with these Xanadu Studio watercolors and their Aquadot line of watercolors. Uh, since I have not used um, a lot of handmade watercolors other than this and the Renaissance ones, I really don't feel um, qualified to do a review on them. So I I recommend you check out some other YouTubers that use handmade watercolors, such as Eve Bolt over at Bolt's Vault, and um, the channel Sadie Saves the Day, because I think she actually has these paints as well as others, and she can kind of show you a comparison that would be much better than what I can um, I can advise you on. So what I'm going to do today is show you these paints and let you make up your own mind whether they're for you or not, because as with anything art supply related, it comes down to personal preference. So um, the paints come in some interesting formats here. Um, if you watched my handmade, my making handmade watercolors for the first time video, you would have seen me make these highly metallic watercolors using two gram bags from Xanadu Art Studio. Those bags are $9 each, and um, the uh, the website says you should be able to get two full pans, but I didn't add any extenders to mine. I just added some gum arabic and water, and um, I got one full pan just to kind of give you um, a heads up of like what you can expect, probably somewhere in between, depending on what else you're adding to your paints. Obviously, you can extend them more if you want to. Um, you can see these are super vibrant and opaque, so you know if you wanted to extend them and get two full pans using some other fillers, then um, then I think it would be definitely be possible. Uh, she also has these very generous dots, which are about a quarter of a pan sized. Those are $2 each, so it's a good way to test them out before you buy a larger quantity in case you're not sure if it's something that's for you. Um, like for, I'm, I'm usually not a huge fan of dot cards personally because they just kind of I don't know, I, don't, I never feel like it's quite enough to do that much with, and they become precious because they're tiny, um, and then they just sit around in your binder with all your other swatches, and then, you know, you might not actually have that too, but you have this one, I don't know, just for me, I don't like dot cards, but I do like these because they're bigger and you can actually do a few paintings and uh, get an idea for, you know, what you might want to purchase. Uh, or even see if that type of painting is for you because you could you could get a lot more for your money with those They also have half pans. I gotta look at my notes real quick to see the price on the half pans They're between six and seven fifty. So this is a half pan size um, It just depends on what the pigments are and they have full pan um, tubs that are nine dollars and then they have um, other tubs with fresh paint like this right here, which is um, I think that is, well, between 9 and 10.50. I believe those are the same price. And then they have liquid um, half pan equivalent jars, which are 7.50. So depending if you prefer like fresh from the tube um, paint or you prefer dried half pans, you can, um, or you know, you can get what you want to get or you can get pigments and make your own. So um, I swatched them out. I, I kind of saved all the swatches that she sent with the half pans. They come with a little swatch, which is really helpful um, with the names written on them. So, um, I saved those because I just knew I was going to forget what everyone was called since they're not using customary names. They use more whimsical names that are um, kind of proprietary to her shop or to wherever you buy it. They'll have kind of interesting names. Some companies use names of birds for their names. Um, so it just kind of dis distinguishes them a little bit different from a commercially made paint. So what I did was I used what I looked to be the most um, strong primary colors they had, which I think this is ruby, but now that I'm looking at it, that might be... I don't know. I don't know if that's actually ruby because it seems a lot darker than the ruby on my swatch there, so I'm not 100% sure. Um, sunflower and clouds, I believe, and I was able to mix a beautiful um, range of colors. They're a little muted, uh, kind of earthier, but they're still really lovely. And then I took the colors that I made from the dry pigments and did myself a little kind of like a metallic um, try out of mixing just to see what I would get there. I really like the way the pink and the gold mixed together to get this really pretty rose gold color. 
so lovely um it was fun and then i put all my swatches together here just so i'd be able to see the full range of everything i had and it is a very um it's a very pretty muted palette now um the reason also the reason i'm not reviewing this and it's more of an overview is because i prefer more transparent vibrant shades that i could mute down if i need to so that's my preference it doesn't have to be your preference it doesn't mean it's good or bad or anything but i just want to put that out there because i don't feel qualified to do like a, a a really comprehensive review, okay? Because I, I just haven't used enough competitors of, of handmade watercolors to have enough information about what's good or what's bad, what's better, what's worse. Um, so these, you know, you're you're gonna see what they are and make up the decision for yourself. Um, when I was first testing these out, I just did a few little like bookmarks. I did, um, I did that flower on the back of a swatch. Um, I did some roses. You can see kind of the shimmer on the paints there and um, how the colors are really soft and muted, which is really pretty. So I did have a couple requests to show you how I do those um, kind of really loose Victorian roses. If you want more information on how to paint uh, loose roses, I have various um, different angles of flowers and ways to come up with them in my watercolor flower workshop course, which I will link below. Uh, but I will show you a basic rose um, here just so that you can kind of practice if you want to. And uh, we'll just go ahead and do that. I'm gonna start by taking some of this uh, ruby and mixing it with some water on my glass palette here. And I'm gonna start by um, using really small, I'm just gonna do one rose. I'm just gonna do kind of some small strokes in the center, just little kind of curvy pats. And then I am going to just spread my brush out more and do some bigger uh, some bigger shapes. Then I can go into, um, I just have these pans all sitting in a tin with magnets on the back. You can see them there, the handmade ones I did and others. And I'm grabbing this darker red, which I don't know what color that is. Um, and I'm gonna go back in towards the center and add that in so I have a little bit more of a darker color in there. And I'm gonna start slightly adding it to the edges of some of these shapes and then they'll just kind of flow together. Now the flow on these paints are, is not as, um, it doesn't disperse as much as like your traditional watercolors um, and also once you do them in a wet to wet wash they do get very muted. Um, I think that's just kind of the nature of these types of colors. They're probably better to do wet on dry so you can retain and control the vibrancy that you want. Um, and then again, I don't, this, this is going by the colors that I have from this particular company. Okay, so I'm not gonna, gonna um, I'm not gonna claim that, you know, I know all, all kinds of stuff about handmade watercolors, because I don't. Um, and now I'm just gonna grab some greens. I think I'll grab this uh, this pretty green here. Now this green that I'm using, it, because it's in a full pan, I know I took it out of a jar. This was one of their half pan jars and I poured it into a full pan. So the half pan jars are actually a little more generous than a, than a half pan. Um, so I've just poured that into a full pan because I like to work from, my, uh, from paints that are wet. I'm just going to grab another color here. I'm going to use the, the edge of my brush and get some color off of that big dot. And I'm just going to press my brush in and just do some leaves that way. Just get a couple little leaves in there. Um, the one thing that I that I noticed that I didn't like about these paints was um, I like to paint outside and I was sitting on my porch yesterday and I was painting um, the the glare from the paint was so bad because of all the mica I had a really hard time to um, to paint outside so that might be something to consider if you were thinking about adding this to your plein air kit you might run into some issues if you paint outside, you know, just trying to see what you're, what you're painting. Do a little two stroke rows there, or two leaf rather. And just a couple little just a couple little singles right there. So there you have the rows. I mean, it's nothing 
earth shattering you know you let it dry and uh, and it's pretty easy you could throw that on a bookmark or a card or whatever you have and like I mentioned if you want more information on that check out my course watercolor flower workshop uh, if you let the petals all dry first you're not going to get any wicking in of color but sometimes that looks kind of pretty so completely up to you what you want to do I think bottom line for me um, I don't think that handmade paints are my cup of tea I really didn't enjoy making the paints that much I mean it was all right it was kind of fun I mean I I'm glad I did it I probably won't do it again just because it's I you know I like painting I don't so much like the making of the paints but that's you know some people love it um, and you know neither is right or wrong you do what you want to do that is that's my motto anyway uh, so where this isn't a review per se I think you can get a good idea for the um you know, for the range of colors you're going to find from Xanadu Studio, their prices are pretty much on par with what other uh, handmade watercolor uh, makers are charging. Making watercolor paints is very labor intensive, so that's the reason why you're going to pay the same, if not maybe more than um, than what you can get professional paints for, especially if you're buying online and you're taking advantage of coupons and discounts and stuff. So you're not really going to save a lot of money, um, And but I don't think handmade watercolor companies and people are making a lot of money just because I did that little experiment. I made some paint and I was like, wow, this is a lot of work. I'm not doing this again um so you know i think it's really fun to try out i think i would recommend trying out the dots um because you are going to get quite a bit of paint there and um you know you could do a lot of paintings and decide whether you wanted to go further with pans or, and and you know they're on scraps of watercolor paper so you know you don't have the plastic um you know trash going in the landfill you don't have jars i personally don't like um having i like to have pans or half pans or I like to have um, two paint that I can put in a palette having random jars does not work for me um, I think it's kind of cute uh, I mean they're they are definitely cute and if you like to work with fresh paint then that's kind of nice because you don't have to like squeeze it out every time you can just dip into your into your pot of paint but um, for me I would much rather have it in a in a half pan but that's okay because she sells it that way too you can get it however you want to get it um, and of course if you want to make your own paint she does offer that as well and it's probably one of the few places you'd be able to buy such a small quantity of pigment so you don't have to you know buy a big jar if you only want to make like a pan or two or or you're like me and you don't know if you're ever gonna like doing it you can get a couple little bags of different colors try it if you love it then maybe invest in larger tubs of ones that you know you're going to use but if you're like me and you did this and you're like wow I'm so glad I didn't get big jars of this because I don't want to do this again <laughs> so it gives you that option um the owner of the shop is very is very nice she didn't um she sent me the paint she said if you don't like them let me know so I can improve basically and she said if you love them um you know if you, and if you want to review them that'd be great if you don't love them let me know how I can make them better so I think an attitude like that is really awesome and um I have no advice because I've never used handmade paints before. I do think this is such a, a pretty collection, honestly. And this color, was it this one? This one right here um, called Flesh. It has a really pretty shimmer to it. And I was working on this painting from my imagination that I got to warn you, it's not that great. But um, but I wanted to see if maybe I could do something to liven up the skin tone. And I used that and I thought it was it was kind of effective. I liked the little shimmer to it. And I used the handmade gold in the hair. Um, and I used some of the, the her blue in the water and it did give it a really nice shimmer so I think for me personally I wouldn't use it for an entire painting in I would use it for accents because I think that just having a little bit of a sparkle or shine here or there is nice but I probably wouldn't want to do the whole thing within it or I would use it for um, maybe hand lettering or calligraphy or guilting part of a greeting card that I've done on like a dark cardstock um, so bottom, bottom line I say they're well made um, they work as you know I I can't say the work compared to other brands because I haven't used other brands but uh, but they were really fun you can kind of see um, here you're going to get some interesting granulation I think with the colors because if I look here I'm definitely seeing like kind of some pigments moving apart from each other from the pinks that I was using um, which can be a really pretty effect if it's in a wash and it's drying I'll show you here in this wash you can just kind of see little little bits of um, of the way the pigments played with each other and, and split and just gave you some interesting textures which is nice for certain effects so 
you know, I'd say if you're curious, give it a try. They're a lot of fun. They have a really pretty shimmer to them. Um, I don't know as far as light fastness. She doesn't have that information because she mixes several. Each pigment is not like um, a single pigment. It's a mixture of pigments. And uh, she kind of invents them as she goes. So you want to check back often to see if there's something that you like there. But because of that, um, you're not getting a single pigment color. It's going to be difficult to determine how light fast it is and, um, and how much longevity you have. But if you're using this on greeting cards, or scrapbook pages or bookmarks, things that are ephemeral, um, and you want something fun to try, why not? You know, it's uh, cheap thrills. It's fun. So that's my overview. Like I mentioned, please check out other people's reviews that have used other handmade paints because I feel like this is just kind of an overview. I, I'm not qualified to do a review on this product because I haven't used this type of product. But um, but I can tell you the, the shop owner is really nice. The, uh, the paints are fun to use. Um, and there you go. <laughs> I guess that's all I have to share. I hope you enjoyed the little rose. Um, that was a lot of fun to paint with you. And as you can see, it's very quick and would be super fun and sweet on a bookmarker card. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up. And until next time, happy crafting.